Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala, Spanish. We are in the paper entitled Advanced Spanish Grammar. I am Gaurav Kumar and I teach Spanish in the Center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the module titled Exclamatory 1. One of the easiest ways to convey a very strong feeling or opinion about something is to use an exclamatory word. These words are very similar to interrogative words, but instead of asking a question, they simply state an idea or opinion. Exclamatory words make a simple phrase into a statement of surprise or amazement. The specific word used in a Spanish exclamation depends on the word that follows. Notice that all exclamatory words carry an orthographic accent just like interrogative words. Exclamatory statements are formed just like interrogatives. The exclamatory word is first and is followed by the quality being exclaimed. This can be an adjective, adverb, verb, or noun. Most of the time, the noun or noun phrase and verb are switched from their more natural order. To make judgments about the characteristics of someone or something or on the way of doing something, or a situation and to intensify qualities, sensations or feelings, the following constructs are used. Quan. Quan is used in literary works and not commonly in speech. Let us see some examples. Quan Feliz me haces. I repeat. Cuán feliz me haces. The English equivalent is. How happy you make me. Let us take another example. Cuán mal educados son. I repeat. Cuán mal educados son. The English version is how rude they are. Keep in mind that quan can be replaced by k or k can be replaced by quan. Quanto, which is used in front of nouns to express surprise at an amount and in front of verbs to express surprise at how much someone is doing the action of that verb. To modify a noun, quanto must match the noun in gender and number. To modify a verb, use the singular masculine form quanto. So, with nouns, we have the possibilities of using cuantos, cuantas, cuanto, cuanta. Let us see some sentences to understand the usages. Cuanto dinero tiene Bill Gates? I repeat, cuanto dinero tiene Bill Gates? The English equivalent is 
how much money bill gates has another example is cuántas bendiciones tenemos cuántas bendiciones tenemos the english version is how many blessings we have so in these two sentences you can see that before dinero cuánto is used and before bendiciones cuántas is used as bendiciones is plural and feminine that is why cuántas and dinero is el dinero that is why cuánto some more examples cuántos perros i repeat cuántos perros the equivalent english version is what a lot of dogs another example is cuánto te quiero i repeat cuánto te quiero how much i love you or we can also say i love you so much in these two sentences you can see the difference that when it is noun perros then cuantos is used as per masculine plural los perros but when used with the verb querer as in te quiero it is just cuanto which doesn't change next example is cuanto bailamos anoche i repeat cuanto bailamos anoche the english equivalent is how much we danced last night or we can also say we danced so much last night let us come to the use of the word k in the exclamatory form k is used in front of nouns adjectives and adverbs to mean how or what are let us see some constructions k plus adjective plus verb k músico es i repeat k músico es the english equivalent is what a musician he is let us take another example que inteligentes son i repeat que inteligentes son the english version is how smart they are or we can also say they are so smart que combined with noun let us see an example que hombre que hombre the english version is what a man que plus noun plus mass plus adjective let us see this construct in the form of a sentence que casa más grande i repeat que casa más grande the english version is what a big house another set of construct is k plus noun plus tan plus the adjective in a sentence let us see this k mujer tan guapa i repeat k mujer tan guapa the english version is what a beautiful woman when an adjective is not used the exclamation may indicate positive or negative aspects depending on context and intonation que casa this can mean es una casa maravillosa extraña o desastrosa i repeat que casa this can mean that 
es una casa maravillosa, extraña o desastrosa? ¿Qué casa has its equivalent? What a house. But it can mean it's a wonderful, strange or disastrous home because the adjective has not been used in this case which can define the quality. ¿Qué sueño he tenido? ¿Qué sueño he tenido? This can mean in Spanish, he tenido un sueño extraño, desagradable o maravilloso. I repeat, ¿Qué sueño he tenido? This can mean in Spanish, he tenido un sueño extraño, desagradable o maravilloso. The English equivalent is, what a dream I had. This could mean, I had a strange, unpleasant or wonderful dream. Next is the case of K plus noun plus el mío, la mía, el tuya, la tuya. To emphasize the person. Let us see this construct in an example. Que suerte la tuya. This can mean que suerte tienes. I repeat. ¿Qué suerte la tuya? Or, ¿Qué suerte tienes? In English, How lucky you are. Or, Lucky you. ¿Qué valor el vuestro? Or, we can say, ¿Qué valor tenéis vosotros? I repeat, ¿Qué valor el vuestro? Or, we can say, ¿Qué valor Tenéis vosotros. In English, how brave are you? Or we can say, you are so brave. When an adjective follows a noun, it is preceded by mas, which means most. When an adjective follows a noun, it is preceded by mas, which means most, or tan which means so. The construct is K plus noun plus tan or mass plus the adjective. Let us see some examples. Que documental tan interesante. We can also say Que documental más interesante. Both these sentences in English will mean what an interesting documentary. Let us take some more examples. ¿Qué moneda tan rara me he encontrado? Or let us say, ¿Qué moneda más rara me he encontrado? The English version is, What a rare currency I have found. ¿Qué? With adjective. Example, que delicioso, how delicious, que rápido pasa la vida, I repeat, que rápido pasa la vida, in English, how quickly life passes by, quien is used with verbs like pensar, Suponer, sospechar, imaginar, to express surprise at some unexpected event or situation. Quien plus iba a plus infinitive form followed by que plus iba a plus infinitive. Let us see this construct. In an example, ¿Quién iba a pensar que Ana se iba a divorciar? 
I repeat, ¿Quién iba a pensar que Ana se iba a divorciar? The English equivalent is, Who would have thought that Ana was going to divorce? Next construct is that of ¿Quién? Plus iba a, plus the infinitive, followed by que, plus the subject, and the verb in the conditional. Let us see it in an example. ¿Quién iba a pensar que Ana se divorciaría? I repeat, ¿Quién iba a pensar que Ana se divorciaría? The English version is, who would have thought that Anna would divorce? Another set of construct is Kien plus Iba A plus infinitive plus K plus the imperfect of the indicative. Let us see this in an example. Kien Iba A pensar que Lourdes estaba deprimida. I repeat. ¿Quién iba a pensar que Lourdes estaba deprimida? In English, who would have thought that Lourdes was depressed? The construct of quien can be followed by podía and the rest of the construct remain as same as the earlier case. Let us see this in an example. ¿Quién podía pensar que íbamos a trabajar juntos? I repeat, ¿Quién podía pensar que íbamos a trabajar juntos? In English, who could think that we would work together? ¿Quién followed by podía plus the infinitive followed by que and the final subject and the verb in conditional? ¿Quién podía pensar que trabajaríamos juntos? ¿Quién podía pensar que trabajaríamos juntos? The English version, who could think that we would work together? ¿Quién plus podía plus infinitive followed by que plus the imperfect of the indicator? ¿Quién podía pensar que Lorenzo tenía dos hijas. ¿Quién podía pensar que Lorenzo tenía dos hijas? In English, who could think that Lorenzo had two daughters? Now, coming to the next construct is that of quien followed by podría plus the infinitive followed by que plus iba a plus infinitive. Let us see this construct in the form of a sentence. ¿Quién podría pensar que iba a bajar la bolsa? ¿Quién podría pensar que iba a bajar la bolsa? In English, who would think that the market was going down? ¿Quién followed by podría? plus the infinitive and followed by K plus subject and final verb in the conditional. ¿Quién podría pensar que bajaría la bolsa? I repeat, ¿Quién podría pensar que bajaría la bolsa? Who would think that the market would go down? ¿Quién plus podría plus infinitive? followed by K plus the subject and the final verb in the imperfect past. Let us see it in an example. ¿Quién podría pensar que la empresa tenía pérdidas? I repeat, ¿Quién podría pensar que la empresa tenía pérdidas? In English, who would think that the company had losses? Quien is also used to express wishes. Quien 
प्लस द इम्परफेक्ट सब्जेक्टिव केन कोसिनारा कोमोतु आई रिपीट केन कोसिनारा कोमोतु द इंग्लिश वर्जन इज हु कुड कुक लाइक यू केन फॉलोड बाय पुदेरा प्लस द इन्फिनिटिव इज इन द सेम वे यूज्ड फॉर एक्सप्रेसिंग विशेस Quien pudiera viajar como tú, me gustaría conocer África. I repeat, quien pudiera viajar como tú, me gustaría conocer África. In English, who could travel like you? I'd like to know Africa. Let us see some more examples of the above explained exclamatories. ¿Quién iba a pensar que tendríamos un accidente? ¿Quién iba a pensar que tendríamos un accidente? In English, who would have thought we would have an accident? Next example is, ¿Quién pudiera hablar español como tú? Or we can say, ¿Quién hablara español como tú? Both of these sentences translate as Who could speak Spanish like you? Next example is ¿Quién se iba a imaginar que tendría gemelos? ¿Quién se iba a imaginar que tendría gemelos? This can be expressed with other forms also like ¿Quién se iba a imaginar que iba a tener gemelos? Both these sentences mean in English, who could have imagined that she would have twins. Next example is, ¿Qué bien escribe Ana? I repeat, ¿Qué bien escribe Ana? In English, how well Ana writes. Let us see another example. ¿Qué paisaje? I repeat, ¿Qué paisaje? In English, what a scenery. Another example is, ¿Qué olas? ¿Qué olas? What waves? Next example is, ¿Qué buen gusto tiene Pedro? I repeat, ¿Qué buen gusto tiene Pedro? In English, what a good taste Pedro has. Next example is, ¿Qué vestido más elegante? I repeat, ¿Qué vestido más elegante? In English, what an elegant dress. ¿Qué piso tan acogedor tienes? I repeat, ¿Qué piso tan acogedor tienes? In English, what a cozy apartment you have. Next example is, ¿Qué guapas son tus hijas? I repeat, ¿Qué guapas son tus hijas? The English version is, How beautiful are your daughters? Next example, ¿Qué sed tengo? I repeat, ¿Qué sed tengo? In English, How thirsty I am. Next example, ¿Qué buena suerte la vuestra? I repeat, ¿Qué buena suerte la vuestra? In English, How lucky you all are. Or, Lucky you. ¿Qué mala suerte la suya? I repeat. ¿Qué mala suerte la suya? How unlucky. Next example is. ¿Quién podía sospechar que Mario nos engañaba? I repeat. ¿Quién podía sospechar que Mario 
nos engañaba. In English, who could have suspected that Mario was cheating us? Let us take another example. ¿Qué jóvenes se han muerto los padres de Lola? I repeat. ¿Qué jóvenes se han muerto los padres de Lola? In English, how young Lola's parents have died. Next example is, ¿Qué montañas tan altas? I repeat, ¿Qué montañas tan altas? In English, what mountains so high? ¿Cuánto humo? Debe de haber un incendio. I repeat, ¿Cuánto humo? Debe de haber un incendio. So much smoke. There must be a fire. ¿Cuántos libros tiene el profesor? ¿Cuántos libros tiene el profesor? How many books the professor has. ¿Cuánto trabaja Eva? Le va a pasar algo. ¿Cuánto trabaja Eva? Le va a pasar algo. How much Eva works? Something may happen to her. ¿Cuánto ladra este perro? ¿Cuánto ladra este perro? How much this dog barks? This dog barks so much. ¿Cuánto lo siento? ¿Cuánto lo siento? How sorry I am. ¿Cuánta gente? ¿Cuánta gente? So many people. We have seen some frequently used exclamations in Spanish. Hope you have learned their proper functioning and have enjoyed their usages. We shall continue with some more in the next module. Thank you. Gracias.